Hello everybody, uh, my name is Rado Popescu and I'm a retired architect and lecturer. And I return to you, invited by the college, to share with you some uh, precious thoughts. Going back to the history, once upon a time, uh, Vitruvius, a Roman architect, uh, brought uh, to light and wrote almost everything about the Roman and Greek architecture. Um, he called it, uh, because it's a lot of material, the 10 book of architectures. Luckily, 1400 years ago, <coughs> Palladio, uh, who is considered a father of Renaissance, discovered the book, translated them in Italian, and all the heritage has been uh, acting like a culture and aesthetical big bang. The Renaissance spread like a wildfire to Italy, to Europe, and to us, and uh, the impact is still today. Vitruvius said that the quality of architecture are uh, firmitas, uh, utilitas, and venustas. Firmity is in firm, strong, a building has to hold itself. Utilitas like a utility, not the utility pipes, utility of the building, functionality, usefulness of the building. And venustas are pretty, the aesthetics. Uh, by the way, we all know that Venus is a goddess of uh, beauty, so Venus does its beauty. With these qualities, whether we are aware or not, we still apply them today. Some of us more than others, and some of us better than others. So it depends on everybody's performance and achievement. So that's about the three qualities of architecture. How is architecture created uh, from the old time until today? Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm going to try to take you to a journey from the original ideas to the final building. Uh, you have in mind, uh, let's say, a thought, a shape. You're driving or almost dreaming, and think of a shape or something that may inspire you to create a building. Let me take something to illustrate to you this. Let's say, let's say that you see you're taking gas and you see the shell as in shellfish or a seashell. And so you came home or to the school or office and drew something. Let me hurry up a little bit. This shell inspired me once <coughs> to design a restaurant, which is like a fan, like an abanico, uh, spreading to showing uh, in a marina and Pacific Ocean uh, uh, setting to spread to all in the marina, the boats and everything. So that's an inspiration for that. But on the other hand, the same shell could inspire to have a stage. And here there are aisles and seating like a theater, like an amphitheater, like a, a symphonic orchestra or a rock concert and so on and so forth. And the same shell can inspire you to have something irregular grid, depending on what you need to do, it's just an inspiration. Let's say, let's say this is a very uh, upscale home somewhere, the entry here, yeah, port share. Maybe that's a large living room overlooking the pool and the, or the sea or the forest, the mountains. Here, that's a recess, maybe the foyer where you get in. And it's a deck, a terrace, which is covered terrace. Then come the bedrooms, then come the, the dining room, the uh, kitchen, dining room, and access to the deck to the outdoor. So this could be very irregular, but still come to this spread the radial uh, concept. Let's see now that, uh, that you have another idea. You look at the snail. If you imagine the snail, pick it up from the top, turning upside down and stretch like a paper, uh, paper origami, you get something eventually, uh, some architect, <laughs> Frank Lloyd Wright, got this inspiration and design the Guggenheim Museum, <coughs> which is a fantastic, straightforward and functional utilitas. And 
firm it does, you think it does, and the Venus does. You go up, and the corridors are a spiral. So you go on down and down and down and down, you see all the paintings and sculpture. Okay. So this can continue on and on. I'm not going to elaborate too much, but we have to move to other things to discuss. You have a cube. What do you do with this cube? You may carve in. You may add something. And you shade it so that become more for yourself or rather more visible or understandable. And if you want, you can add a dome on top of it and become a house, a church, a mosque, whatever you want on that direction. Could be a tower that you see quite often. One is in West Africa, I believe, but there are many of them. Even some residents are like that. It's a tower, like a dome, coming from Moorish or uh, Arab or the Middle East. So you can play with the shape to create architecture. Now that's the shapes. When you when you get past the shape, go to the functionality to the utilitas. You have to think of the function and our needs for a certain building. Uh, let me give you an example. You have to design a house, for example, and uh, Let's say uh, you think, think freely. You don't, you're not constrained of other people demand and what think people would think about you, or uh, you you let your mind dream and the mind transmit to the hand and hand mind combination to get this idea. Let's say you have a lobby for you when you enter the house and have a coat and hat so closet here. You have. As you notice, I don't pay attention to the form, shape, or dimension, windows, doors. It's just the idea, like a clouds in a way. So that may be a den slash exercise room slash computer room slash uh, business. Then you go to a larger room, maybe uh, the living room or the family room or the great room, which is a combination thereof. From here, you need to have access to let's say to a dining room, dining room. From here, you wanna to make to a kitchen, which is better to be connected to a dining room, but the kitchen wants to be also connected to the exterior where you have a deck to have barbecue, to have an outdoor party, or enjoy the nature. Uh, a corridor leading to other functions. Corridor is a little longer, leading to one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, bathroom, bathroom. What's on the other side? You got another loop. That's Another entity which master bedroom, master bathroom, and maybe the exercise room and his and her closet. Her closet always bigger. Okay, uh, just one more thing, not only about homes. Let's see you're designing a school. And we're gonna get to that in uh, the actual pictures. You have, uh, let me change the color. That's a green scheme, okay. You have the entry, let's say you have the administration, the reception administration, you have counseling and uh, nurses. Uh, from the administration, you have principal, assistant, assistant principal, and that's the main turning plate like a foyer, lobby, commons. You have the library in the center. You praise yourself with the library, the library is the center of temple of culture, so to speak. And from here, like branches, like arms, you go to some arms and start classroom, 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 classroom. Between the classrooms, you plug in maybe bathroom and maybe here another bathroom. That's much necessary. All these are little bit quite academic activities. So what do you put? That's a linear scheme. There are round schemes, uh, a radial scheme like my hand, and clusters of things, and I'm gonna show you very soon. And the end, some now you put the gym. Maybe the other end, you put the cafeteria. Cafeteria with a kitchen from outside, so it can be fed by trash and uh, supplied to storages and cold storages. So the kitchen has to be in the outdoor. 
The gym is here, is a cafeteria because there are two noisy activities. And it needs to be a little bit away from the concentration here to the academic and the so quiet activities. The gym may have also boys and girls, let's say it's a school restroom. In the foyer, maybe the parents come here. The foyer needs also their own restroom. So it's like a little theater or movie theater. It's a little show time. If, if the cafeteria has a cafeteria has a stage, it's cafetorium, it's combination of auditorium and cafeterium. cafeteria. Uh, the gym could have seating, then you have all this access of the public or not. So anyway, it's enough. You can do a diagram for a hotel. <coughs> I'm not gonna go that much in detail. But coming back to a very abstract thinking, you may have, for example, a bubble, another bubble. That's a hotel lobby. Uh, this is hotel activities, conference rooms, kitchen, storage, and so on and so forth. The intersection of that, it's something that leads to a third entity, which are the elevator stairs. So here, the connection between those bubbles is also vertical. If it doesn't have this, let's say, you may have an entity that's practically any hotel, regardless if it's a round square. Uh, if you have uh, something like two polarized project, and something like this. I designed once a cancer research institute in Torrey Pines, California. There is one very pretty, very nice here on Second Avenue, next to Ramboshi Suite uh, Hotel. Very good design. Uh, not mine, <laughs> okay. And uh, I would praise myself. So. With a different research, with another other type of research, in between the courtyard, California has a weather allows you to spend a lot of time outdoor. The courtyard, which is like a think tank, so the main element is not the, this building or that building, but the space is not object, but the space. So space is as important as the object. So you can have a lot of scheme. Let's see one more, one more. That entity one, entity two, entity three. The intersection between one and two is here, two and three is here, one and two, one and three. And in between somewhere, that's something that have all the qualities here. That uh, basically, to, to make a little joke here, it's like, like a multitude in mathematics. Multitude of people with hats, multitude of people with umbrellas, and multitude, a multitude of people with a bag here. These are hats and bags, Umbrella and bags, hats and umbrella. These people has combination. This has all three of them. So that in architecture is a function diagram. Functional diagram. Let me move a little bit to bring you some, uh, let's see, more elaborate, more real examples. Uh, here the base is a linear diagram, similar to the one I just uh, showed you, except it's not all the way linear and cone diagram where the wings are perpendicular, classroom, 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 or maybe the center could be library. You recognize, hopefully from my diagram, cafeteria in the kitchen, the gym, administration, nurses, uh, reception, counseling nurses. So basically this is it for our school. But under many schemes that we studied for the uh, client, the uh, Roma ISD, one of them was different from others, was the hand or the radio concept which they like very much, especially because uh, they had also the Roma Middle School, which I designed many years, many months ago. Uh, and uh, basically the same function, like a human organ, the liver, the kidney, the lungs, would be in this case uh, organized in a different way. But the scheme, the functionality, the each individual entity or bubble uh, reason to be, it's the same in the other scheme because our needs are the same. We serve the same in a elementary school, which has everything it takes. So the radio scheme was selected by the district and did the level further, which uh, hopefully time allowed, I can go and show you future drawings. Moving to other schemes, uh, these are uh, the design for Alamo High School in uh, PSGA, and very similar to San Juan, now this is a veteran high school. Uh, School name changed, and then I may have the project name that I work on, but uh, things are changing. Uh, so let's say if you start from the original idea, that's a hexagonal or, or, or honeycomb, let's say, idea with three wings. 
that's a square, like a sign of plus. This is symmetrical, okay? And there's an X diagram. This X diagram with one selected, we developed, which leads eventually to, and by the way, the hexagonal diagram, the study side plan, row plan, I mean, you have to see if it's feasible. The X diagram, like a tic-tac-toe, which is very rough, uh, I don't know if I can, let's say, increase a little bit to see the roughness of that skin. It's really, you don't have to control yourself. You're not afraid you draw some crooked lines. You just sketch and sketch and sketch to put your idea down. It doesn't, the rest doesn't matter. And then, once approved, you start developing into a more firm plan. Like, now you see the wings, corridors, uh, a gym, a court, gym court, the cafeteria, kitchen storages, administration and the uh, performing arts center so let me go back uh, these are open-ended elements or entities because you can extend them again i'm repeating <coughs> and these are closed that you have to design for a future because it's very hard to grow those things now this exactly like the hexagonal diagram you have to go to to see how the roof how the plant how the side and the parking goes you have to study the parking we generate a lot of parking there, the fences and for security. So out of these teams, this one was selected. And then the district was very happy with the solution. And by the way, to tell you the other, uh, a little more of the story, uh, the library hits in the middle. Unfortunately, the fire marshal didn't let us to make it all glass because it was a fear from fires. So nowadays, we managed to override this. If you sprinkle on both sides of the glass, you can have it all over. So the purpose of having this, the glass again, library in the middle of everything, you have windows to the library. In the next project, in, in uh, some, uh, some fun project for, uh, for veterans, they wanted exactly the same thing. And they have to fly back to tell them I didn't like the center. So what we did, this, this and this function are very tall, the cafeteria, gym, performing arts center, like the theater. Administration is low. So I moved the library on top of the administration. I create a foyer here. Maybe we'll see if not the next time. Okay. Uh, so so finally, it's uh, similar, but not similar. Okay. That's another scheme. I'm moving on to a different uh, scheme. You see, the bubbles that have to be around would be corridor, school, Liverpool. And to go back and forth, it's fine, okay, uh, back on four. Uh, that scheme, if you remember quickly, generate this one. Now I have classroom dimension, gym, administration. So it start leading to becoming a project. This scheme, this, this, the X diagram, the roughness, and we keep going. Now, the, the thinking, this is a, a flat 2D, thinking with all the bubbles, diagrams, spaces, circulation, and so on, so on. But you can't only do this. Most of the time you have to think vertically, like a 3D. So if a section, you cut the project I just show you, may have a floor, classroom, classroom, corridor, corridors, that's an entry. And you have the gym, pretty interesting. The gym is tall and, um, no, sorry, the gym here is tall, has the bleachers, and you can access the gym from upper and lower corridor. Classroom, corridors, classroom, corridors. You can access the gym in the upward part, like in a stadium. Which you can go under and go upward. Uh, here it's a scheme still in uh, 2D, but they show exactly the corridors, the commons, in other words, the foyers, the library, and the four entities that are around. This very diagrammatic, and, uh, but it served the purpose. Now I'm skipping to what this is becoming in a schematic design and evolves into design development. C, uh, it's a SD and DD, we call it, design development. Now you know, let me zoom a little more. You have large dimensional lab, uh, lab technician office, library with stacking tables, individual office studies, computer rooms, uh, let's say the classroom wings, a certain dimension, the restrooms, and then you go to the detail of each classroom, for example, it's a chemistry lab and uh, with an auditorium, let's say, a lecturing area. And it goes on and on. This happened to be the second high school where we have that big foyer lobby. 
and it might be pretty pleasant to go up and to, to look down to have an impression of a like a big theater for you so now we discuss about bubble diagram and floor plan. in the end have something more materialized which may give you satisfaction uh, this is the anti I'm sorry if that was small the anti the performing arts center like a foyer very architectural sculpture leading to a very large volume the CNT to actual high school uh, which have the 45 degree wings and the tower about the lobby in the foyer the very tall volume of the performing arts center with the stage is uh, uh, much taller than anything else. they have all the equipment and to the gym another corner of the, of the high school and here for example it's the, just to achieve that you have to study everything no more diagrams you have to study the volumes like i was drawing the cubes over there the shadows terraces go back now niches uh, the rhythm of the windows they are not monotonous like two in space and two in space the towers with elevated tower and stair tower leading also to the to the roof so uh, uh, detailed in the elevation PSG high school you see you can tell that those blades are 45 degree this is octagonal so everything has a square orthogonal grid and a 45 degree like a, like an X the combination thereof so it's not that simple now the building so here here exactly what I told you until uh, I really wish that I made it uh, friendly and uh, accessible enough so you can remember what I'm telling you as a very very let's say very basic thoughts coming from my mind and from my heart to you so so you can remember at least the basic if you think a year later what did you learn here well I learned that you can do anything starting from your own ideas that your mind has to be free and to be aware that that you're trying to do something strong, functional, and aesthetic. So that's how you create a good architecture. The rest is up to the offices and the school and the computer and technologies. You're not alone. A lot of people will hold your hand until you grow into this profession. So thank you for, for watching.